What's up? Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Black Lodge Games live stream, and thank you for bearing with us through that rather long start screen. But we realized we had two minutes, and we were like, you know what? We're going to smoke again. <laughs> <laughs> they can wait. <laughs> All right, let's see Hell what's yeah. going on. I was uh, <clears throat> really ill last week, so we canceled. Uh, so do sort of apologize for that. Um, but not really. But not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do we got here? Squat bench deadlift. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, man. Here I am planning my garden layout, and suddenly these chads, these Black Lodge Games <laughs> men, flop down Matt Colville's face in front of me, right in front of my salad. Salad, man. What are you doing? Oh, you got to eat man. more steak. Come on. Not to mention that you picked his O face. I did pick his O face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I never wanted to contemplate what Colville's O face might be, and now you've thrust it upon me. Damn you, and well played. <laughs> and let us know if uh, the uh, music's too loud or whatever. We can adjust some sound levels, but right, right, I, right. I think we're doing okay right now. Um, yeah, we'll check back in with you guys in a second. Uh, let's see. Dyson Anarchy, good to see you, man. Yeah. Uh, it looks like he's shouting his power pronouns at me. <laughs> uh, my knowledge of the guy is limited to a cursory glance, maybe a couple of minutes of one of his tips videos. I think I tried to watch a bit more of another, but uh, it didn't really grab me. Well, you're in luck because we're going to watch a little bit of one of his videos. Not too much of it. Other people yeah. have already talked about this. Um, Ryan Howard over at uh, Rolling Bones did a stream this week on it, and I think he said uh, most of uh, most of our thoughts yeah. probably too. And we've talked we've talked about Colville we've talked about here Colville, in the past. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh, why is my mouse freaking out? Come on, give me if I do it here. Okay, it's just the surface. Uh, let's see, Megan Delacroy, good to see a bunch of our. Uh, Locals people are here. If you are interested in joining our community over at uh, blacklodgegames.locals.com, you can use promo code MIDWIT to get one month free. Uh, well, Mercer, using him as a funny XP uh, to set up a battle royale. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Hello, Edens. Your body is ready? Good. Good morning, people. Any predictions how late our couple will be this time? <laughs> <laughs> These guys really be adding everybody out here. Yeah, kind of, I guess. Mm -hmm. They were early two times and technically very late last time. Yeah, I guess yeah. we are a week late this time. <laughs> Born ready. Well, I'm here and they're always early or on time when I'm away. <laughs> I got to go to sleep. We'll check on the stream and I'm back. I've always liked Matt, liked Matt Colville, so we'll see what the Lodge has to say. Right on. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for checking in later on, Roboticus. Uh, it's good to see you. And... Uh, yeah, we don't hate Matt Colville. No. He but doesn't. It's just, <clears throat> it's just the the vibe he's going for, the game that he's making, along with a number of other games that we've uh, explored or looked into, either aren't for us. That's very much the case. Very much with the case. The MCDM yeah. RPG, or um, are not emphasizing what we're emphasizing which is character immersion right yeah it's uh the whole deal with his game is that he wants it to be heroic cinematic and tactical fantasy and i don't really know what that means uh well that, to be the honest. problem is he doesn't know what that means either <laughs> <laughs> which is why which is why that 20 what is it 2025 2025 uh, release date may be a bit uh, over and over ambitious on yeah. his part, which is <laughs> crazy. Well, uh, it does sound like they finally figured out what the core mechanic is uh, for the game that they raised four million. Give it another dollars. like forty-eight hours. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doing a wellness check on Matt and Nick. Thank you, Shauner. <laughs> <laughs> it's go time. <laughs> K9 says, so Pundit thinks y'all don't like him anymore. What's the beef? Um, there's not a beef. No, but... But we don't like him anymore. That's for sure. Uh, he, I think, is a fundamentally dishonest person. Uh, he right. really went after some of our friends 
in a very, very ugly way. Uh, uh, an ugly and a, a very dishonest way. Dishonest, extraordinarily dishonest way last year. And we told him as much during that whole thing. So there's not really, I don't think that there's any question. I don't know that he th doesn't know why. <laughs> like, <laughs> we were very direct. Um, yeah, so he's, uh, I think he's a bad person and just don't want to interact with him. So that's it. Yep. Uh, you'll have to wait for the diss track to find out. Now, there will oh. be no diss track. <laughs> we have no interest in perpetuating drama and certainly do not cause any drama on our behalf. Uh, no, I mean, it's it's so... I almost said something I shouldn't say on stream, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a fruitless endeavor. Yeah. It, it's stupid. It's pointless. You know, again, with... The, you know, going back to character immersion, we're not trying to convince anybody. Right. There are people who have the correct way of playing the correct way of looking at this hobby the correct way of approaching it and some people just don't and they never and they never will and there's no there is no point wasting energy trying to proselytize right right you get you if you know you know you know exactly uh that'll be good no doubt how's it going doc flamingo good to see you uh oh that's us <laughs> <laughs> we were we were smoking uh uh, yeah. Oh, something uh, we do want to say, though, for the uh, for mm. uh, one of the kind of benefits you can get for in the locals. Um, and I'm going to oh, have more yeah, yeah. info on this for the current locals people that I tagged uh, probably within a couple of days. Um, but we want to start running one shots with you guys online, um, maybe streamed, maybe not. Kind of depends on what you guys are feeling. But we have... Mm -hmm. um, some games that we're working on using BRP as the kind of basis of it. And right. uh, we want to start kind of building those out and playing with it and finding which rule, which optional rule sets we want to use and start building our own uh, systems that'll be kind of custom and necessary for the particular games that we're making and also like fleshing out the setting and uh, yes. focusing down the idea while we start uh, the, the harder work on this stuff. Um, yeah. So the, the ideas we've hinted at on earlier streams, um, you know, we're going to be pumping the gas a little bit more on that and yeah. really making it happen and um, want to do it with you guys. So, yeah, exactly. And so the idea with that, too, is that it's not like we're going to run a big ongoing campaign with, with you no, guys or anything like no, that. No, but no. it's like uh, kind of one shots with like a rotating cast of, of players and characters just so we can get kind of a... Uh, a feel for what's working, what people really like and are kind of like hooked on to. Um, and it just kind of gets to know you, you guys a little bit better and, 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 you know, play some games with you too, which is going to be pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so that is definitely a benefit if you want to come and uh, subscribe to locals. Table runner, crispy. Good to see you, man. Hey man. Uh, definitely want to get you in a game at some point as well. Oh yeah. The doc is in uh, puff puff. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so do we get two streams since you missed last Thursday? No. Um, but you can watch this stream twice. Twice, yeah, and increase our watch time. <laughs> uh, which uh, we do want to thank all eighty-one people here who are. Uh, oh my, my God, God, we got a super chat. Eden for ten dollars. Let's go find out what that is. Uh, heroic game design: the most sure way to make sure you are not heroic. <laughs> <laughs> Heroes go against the odds. Heroes stand against even their friends to do what is right. Heroes prevail when they should not. <laughs> thank you yeah. man, for the uh, ten dollars we do appreciate yeah, thank that. you man yeah i mean heroic fantasy i mean what would be the corollary to that i mean, I, I mean that's those words mean nothing because right. every D D esque fantasy game claims to be some manner of heroic fantasy right without having any conceptualization or any artistic vision of what being a hero means, what it means right. to overcome adversity, why? What is the notion yeah. of good and evil? What is the notion of good and evil? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's... And I, this is part of what... Um, 
spurred, I, I, I think, more of what we, we might get into, um, which is the complete lack of any, any identity, even, even a vibe, uh, mm -hmm. but certainly not um, a coherent vision of what it is you're trying to uh, simulate, emulate, what actions, what type of people are you trying to be and to what end mm -hmm. in an RPG? Right. Everything has either defaulted to the middle of this sort of milk toast schlock or there's this sort of fetishization of mechanics as if mm -hmm. some creative, some resonant creative um, hook will be emergent through some like adept synthesis of of you know mechanical interfaces mm -hmm. which is absolutely not not the case right. you can't again i've said it i've said it before it's like you you can't know how to use a tool or any instrument without a goal in mind something you're trying to accomplish with that tool it isn't anything in the absence of that. Yeah. We got another super chat though for twenty dollars. Holy thank shit. you very much. This is from Common J. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh what are your thoughts on Web DM channel? Is that Professor uh, Professor uh, Dungeon Master? I don't think so. Um give me <clears throat> I know one I've heard second. Because we've actually got it set up now so we can uh because we're not using StreamYard. We've had this is all manual. So give me one second here. To look this dude up. I'm sure that I've seen this channel before, but I don't yeah. recall the face. Web DM. Web DM. Oh. I don't think I've ever I've, seen this I guy. Hate seen this guy. Warlock. Uh bu -bu -bu -bu. Uh, you know what? I th I think I may have seen one it's a pretty of big their channel. videos before. Let me uh let me come up here and uh move us over to the screen share, see if this works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is this guy's channel, WebDM. 186,000 subscribers. Good for nice, him. Good, yeah, good for him. Or good um, for them, it looks like. Them, yeah. The appropriate use TPK, of them. TPK, lessons to learn from them, basilisks, monsters, trolls. Um, I don't know. Let me let me subscribe to this guy, and I'll, I'll check him out later. Um, but yeah, we'll I, get back to you on that. Yeah, we. Uh, I'm sorry that I can't really answer yeah. that question, though. But thank I, you for, for cluing, cluing us, us in. in. Yeah, okay. Let's bring it back to here. Thank you. Um, bring my chat back up. Oh, fuck you. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's see. And, oh, my God. We got another one. Doc Flamingo for $5 here. I grow weary of heroic game design. Why not a bit of mercenary scumbag design? Mix it up a tad. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is... Um, Perfect oh, man. game I'm going to have that. to change this, too, so it doesn't show the fucking super chat text on my face. Um, <laughs> we'll get it next time. Um but if you actually want a little bit of yeah. uh, mercenary scumbag Streets design... Streets of Peril. Streets of Peril is excellent for fantasy. Uh, you can play these kind of CD characters. I think yeah. I saw Broken Blade might be in the chat, the game designer of that. He's awesome dude. We have a live stream yeah. that we did with him. And an awesome maybe channel like as well. Yeah, really, really good channel. Um, looking forward to his new game, Oath Hammer, as well. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw. Yeah. I did I did watch that, uh, that video the other day. Right. Which, really interested uh, to see... I would suggest uh, finding Broken Blades Discord um, because I think he's probably going to be looking for playtesters. He's also uh, posted in our locals about it as well. So if you are there, uh, you might be able to get in contact with him and help him test it because it sounds pretty awesome. Um, yeah. And then also I would say uh, if you want to do a more modern setting with that kind of a thing, uh, check out Victor Gorchev's uh, Modern, modern necessities. necessities. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which would be great for that. Absolutely. And then, oh my God, you guys are being really generous yeah. tonight. Thank you so much. We got $10 from Jumpsuit John. Uh, sounds cringe, but I look forward to these streams. Uh, that's not cringe. That's no, based. That's based, yeah. in, based in right. Based in <laughs> yeah, true. Based in true. We look forward to them as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just got done editing my latest video and now ready to chill with the boys. Hell Thanks yeah, for man. the inspiration and also the nude feet. You're very welcome. <laughs> uh, or we subscribe to you. Let me see here. Probably not. Let's change that right now. Yeah. Uh, one second while we subscribe to you. Yeah. 
Yes. He might have a different. Yeah. Let us know your YouTube name. Yeah. Your YouTube channel name. Jumpsuit John. Why is that not coming up? Let me try it. Just get rid of the space. All right. Well, oh, oh wait, there he is. There we go. All right. Subscribed. Yeah. Cool. Subscriber nice. number six, man. Everybody go uh, check out Jumpsuit John and subscribe to his channel. Yeah. And we'll, we'll uh, watch this his videos. There's another thing that's awesome. You know, uh, we're learning about new new channels. Right. Um, when people are pitching their ideas or asking questions or ruminating on something they're trying to do in their game or they have a product that's that's coming out. Yeah. It's really cool to see. Right. And uh, speaking of uh, other cool people, we are going to have uh, DM Blackwell on next week, uh, this right. next Thursday. We'll be talking about a whole bunch of stuff uh, like we usually do, but um, he's got a game called Horde Wars, uh, mm -hmm. which is out, I think, on Giant Slayer Games. Uh, we got the PDF and we're going through it right now. Yep. Um, and it's pretty cool. And he's good, good dude. Got some good thoughts. So look forward to that. Uh, Brother Grognard, good to see you. Why is this not popping up? Oh, okay. There it is. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Smokers getting special treatment. What are you talking about? Smokers <laughs> the, the most the, oppressed group. Yeah, the most oppress, oppressed race is smokers. <laughs> and we are all that stands between you and all of the people with mental health problems out there on the streets. <laughs> because when you're inside... We're talking to them. We're talking to them. All right? <laughs> so you're welcome. <laughs> okay. Anyone know what kind they smoke? Okay, so... I smoke Newport 100s. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a joke. <laughs> However, I did quit smoking when I got sick last week. I quit smoking cigarettes, and now I have a. I'm smoking a pipe with tobacco. So, um, <laughs> Nick is more civilized than I, though. He smokes American spirits. Yeah, yeah, and Hestias when when available. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, have you seen the Superman anti-smoking commercials? I have not. No. Oh man, there's smoke. I don't smoke the Devil's Lettuce. I hate the Devil's Lettuce. It's so. It's so it's stupid. So it, it just makes you stupid. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Are we going to talk about Matt Colville's flip a coin role play mechanics? Oh God. <laughs> Possibly. How's it going, Mister Max? Good to see you. Always good to see you. Making us wait is a hate crime. I'm reporting you to Scotland Yard. <laughs> Well, they are not armed right. and are completely cucked, unfortunately. So <laughs> I think we'll make it out okay. Yeah, you see, if you, you can blame Squat Bench Deadlift here. You know, <laughs> he's the curse. If he's on time, we're late. It's definitely his fault, not ours. Virginia Slims. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I should have said. <laughs> okay. uh, any opinions on Monster of the Week? My group might ask to me to run it. Uh, I've never played it. Yeah, I haven't played it. Um, I'm not even sure what system it uses. I think it's its own thing, but it's it's like it's what it is. It's monster of the week. You know, it's the yeah that kind of doesn't sound like my recurring vibe. episodic sort of thing. Yeah, unless you did it in like an X Files way or like a um. They probably both smoke pole. Wow, calling us gay, <laughs> not progressive. Yeah, get back under your bridge, troll. <laughs> Uh, but here's the thing. A troll is someone who causes... It's, it's, it's about mischief and getting people to perform for you. You know? Right. Just being a dick. They cause comedy. Right, yeah. <laughs> Just being a dick is not necessarily being a troll. Although yeah. being a troll can be being a dick. Yes. Yeah. Where's my death grips opening? Don't know. Hmm. Getting Doom and Quake vibes from the music. Yeah, this is oh, yeah. Uh, White Bat Audio, uh, who makes a whole bunch of royalty-free uh, yeah, music great great channel, that you can... Great, yeah, great stuff. It's all, you know, like cyberpunk, synthwave, uh, different stuff. So it, I'm just playing it through Spotify. But uh, it's one of those great dudes out there who makes music that won't get your stream destroyed by YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, my presence has cursed their equipment. The only cure is if they both squat 315 <laughs> while smoking 315. Pfft. Easy. Not at the moment, but, you know, <laughs> when I was lifting, I was well above that. Uh, good thing my dudes are late. I managed to make myself a, uh, a fried eggs. Okay. 
Uh, powered by the apocalypse is a hard pass for me. Other than that, I don't know anything about the setting. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Monster of the Week must be Powered by I the Apocalypse. I thought that it might be. Okay. Yeah, I am not a fan of <clears throat> Powered by the Apocalypse, as you might have gathered if you've watched our Candela Obscure video. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it is not conducive to anything good yeah. or, or lasting. It's just bad. And it, it really is unfortunate that um, the uh, Cult Divinity Lost game uses Powered by the Apocalypse. Yeah. That is an excellent horror um, setting, essentially. Uh, probably the most horrific mm -hmm. setting that I'm familiar with, but it does make you use Powered by the Apocalypse. That sucks. It, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Been enjoying the content. Keep it up. We, we will. will. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to the Medicine Woman RPG. It's going to be really oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you guys help us with the $3 million Kickstarter. Yeah. Uh, 2051 yeah. is right around the corner. Uh, Common J, who I think gave us uh, the $20 super chat. You haven't missed anything yet. We're just getting started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, bu -bu -bu, right on time. Just started. Music is fine. Let me see here. Good. I think his video critiques are good, but his conclusions are so bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know who we're talking about here. Oh, we got another $10 here. From K Dolo, thank you very much for the thank ten dollars. Uh, does it bother you that Cyberpunk uses the word Cyberpunk as its name? It's kind of like calling VTM Gothic Punk nineteen ninety one. No, I think that's no, fine. No, it's fair. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I I think you know Cyberpunk twenty thirteen is one of the foundational pieces of media that coined the term in the general yeah um, consciousness. Yeah, the general consciousness. Uh, it's it's definitely earned it. Yeah. But I do think the word punk as a suffix is Ugh, overused. For everything. Yeah. I saw this dumb... Someone did hope punk. So yeah, it just it like, like... Shut the fuck up. You don't even up. know what you're talking about. Just shut up. And thank you all 103 of you for tuning in. Oh my um, God. Could you uh, give us a like on the video if you could? I'd love, love to see 103 likes on this video if possible. Um, but only if you like it. You can also press the dislike button. That is true. Yeah. Uh, Mac Attack 01, thank you for the $5. Thank you. And I'm not sure if we've had you in the chat before, but I if, you, if we name. have, yeah. Am I the only one that played Baldur's Gate 3 thinking, what a great, great game stuck with such a sad set of rules, i.e. 5e? Yeah, I mean, ah. I it, I thought it was a great game. Yeah. It was If it was shackled by anything, it was there were things other than the rules, um, like uh, some poor characters. But the game does allow you to kill them immediately yeah. upon, for, upon first introduction yeah as we did with um and almost it, everybody and it respects your choices yeah yeah asterian lays uh asterian lazel yeah we killed who else? yeah we killed asterian immediately just w as soon as we found him on the beach shadow um, and gale are the only ones left yeah uh lazel <laughs> lazel attacked me in my sleep and i defended myself yeah. as is my legal right <laughs> and lazel is no more um Let's see. Who we else killed did? Asterian immediately. Uh, Will, Will died in a race riot. In a, ra a race war <laughs> that we caused. Uh, as did Volo. Yeah. <laughs> Who's not a party member, but is a, a, a lore character. Now is a uh, lore corpse. Yeah. Um, uh, we we didn't get Carlac uh, on our. Not yet. Not yeah. not yet. But we, we would have we would have killed her. We would have killed her too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we helped Minthara kill all the druids. Then I banged her. And then she didn't like me for some reason. She also tried to attack me in my sleep, and then we killed them too, which was great. <laughs> um, so we're keeping the realms safe, right? We're we're <laughs> eliminating the non-human scourge, and we're saving the Sword Coast. Yeah, yeah. Although I think Lloyd Gunderson um, acquiesced to every opportunity to use the tadpole in his brain. Oh yeah. <laughs> In, in my solo playthrough, uh, everyone is half illithid now, like officially, like they can fly and everything like that. My my brain is almost, I have like every <laughs> place on it. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's see here. I hope you can license the Dr. Quinn RPG to Evil Hat. <laughs> oh, man, let's see here. It's pretty sad that this Matt Colville thing is the biggest thing in RPGs right now. Embarrassing. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I agree. Uh, all right, let's see here. Uh, Stormcrow says, at Block Lodge Games, 
Howdy, boys. Tonight, I'm calling y'all out. You boys need to make your own TTRPG actual play show. Make Critical Role your bitch. Well, hmm. possibly in the future. Why can't I scroll down? There we go. Uh, we'll come back to that in one second, but we did get a super chat. Uh, from Bodacious Allen for $10. Hell yeah, thank you, sir. Your video on RPG safety tools was interesting. Uh, what are your cat's thoughts on why World of Darkness is moving towards this hypersensitive, puerile direction, especially in regards to horror genres? So, well, Onyx Path in the World of Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness is actually one of the reasons that we made that video because we yeah. saw a video of a bunch of those awful harpies. Um, oh, God. From it's worse Onyx than you Path. Think. It's way worse than you think. Talking about why we need safety tools in horror games and every game and all this other shit. And one of those bitches writes for cult now too, which is just a, just a horrific shame. Um, and it, they're moving in that direction because White Wolf and Onyx Path has always attracted outliers in that they attract freaks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always been the case. But now, just since we've had cultural revolution... Yeah, um, there's there's clout and social right. status to be gained right. by taking the mask off and leaning into their worst uh, impulses. Right. Um, so which that's is why, uh, which, which is, is a shame. Which is a damn shame. Yeah, but because there I were mean, some good games, great games. But oh shit, that was Jeffro. I, I missed that. That was Jeffro. Thanks, uh, thanks for tuning in. It's pretty sad that Matt Colville thing is the biggest thing in RPGs. That is true. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey, Jeffro. Let me see here. Now, uh, now the Lara Croft tabletop faceplant will be bigger than one of several wannabe five E replacements. Are they doing a t uh, a tabletop game of Lara Croft? I yeah, thought that was a video what, game. No, no, no. It's not a video game. That's that's the tabletop. Oh, game. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. Where you can play a, uh, a f multiple a, f a fat a bipoc fat, uh, yeah. <laughs> person with uh, diabetes feet. Yeah. No feet. <laughs> <laughs> Diabetes feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it looks like we got another another super chat here. Uh, Pirella for $2. Thank you. I like your place. Very couch punk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. Oh, man. The pile of books keeps getting more and more yeah, disheveled. Yeah. This fucking uh, white bookshelf needs to just disappear anyway <laughs> that thing's going in the trash <laughs> then everything will be on the floor yeah well that's true yeah <laughs> where, where it belongs <laughs> just like my mattress yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh, but uh, with regards to the the actual play thing um oh yeah we've yeah. done live plays before i mean like we did live plays before critical role was on uh oh yeah and they're still well up, before yeah and they're they're We're still, still they're still on this channel um but the thing is playing these games is not really meant for an audience that doesn't mean you can't stream them it's just that they're not going to be entertaining in the way that a show like critical role is entertaining to people because right the reason it's entertaining is because it's it's because it's meant a TV to show. be yeah, it's meant to be entertaining. Right. It's a it's a show that they're putting on for the benefit of an audience. They're yeah. not actually playing a game. Yeah, and we talk uh, about, or you talk about this in the uh stop Candela acting video. star. Yeah. Well oh, that and oh, also yeah, the yeah, star, yeah. Uh, stop acting and star role playing <clears throat> video where you know it's a it's a misunderstanding of what it is mm. to role play, how to role play, why to role play, uh -huh. and what you should be should be focusing on. So right. you know not going to discount it in the future, but um, it's uh, yeah, there, there's something about being in the space, um, which it, it can't be transmitted to an external audience, right? Even if you're watching it live, um, it it's just it's it's a different it's a different thing, right? Yeah, you can't enter the circle if you're if you're not in in the circle so right uh critical role doesn't do actual play yeah exactly right uh bu 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 ryan fokker finally someone covering mcdm changing their literal core mechanic and math napkin <laughs> after <laughs> over a year and several million dollars the only discourse i've seen so far has been yeah <laughs> slay queen <laughs> uh yeah. here for the dissection of mcdm 
like I said, we'll go over some of it, but Ryan Howard already said a lot of what we're going to, uh, you know, a lot of what we think. And yeah, we've yeah, talked yeah. about this before. Like, how many iterations of the core die mechanic for their game can they come up with? Yeah, like, how many times after can they you... raise $4 million? Yeah, I mean, and how many times do you need to restart from, you know, ground zero right. before you realize that either you're you're doing it wrong, what you're trying to accomplish can't be done, or you're just creatively bankrupt. Right. You know, and I, I'm, I'm sure Matt Colville is, you know, has has creativity of a, of a sort. Uh, but I think the problem, which we've, <clears throat> we've said before, is um, they don't really know what it is they want to do, first of all, first of all. And second in of all, in terms of like a vision of what, what is the experience of, vision, of this game? Yeah. You know, uh, other than like a vague vibe check, in my opinion of, I want to feel like I'm playing a video game or an MMO <laughs> while I'm playing this tabletop game. And, and there's also a tremendous mistake that I've seen a lot of people make on Twitter and on YouTube uh, in that the, the mistaken belief that the answer the key is going to be in the mathematics, is going to be in the interaction between these these different mechanics and die mm -hmm. die rules. That's that is absolutely not the not the case. That's that's a a failed starting point. You're never going to get anywhere if you believe that you can denote some sort of value from mechanics which are arbitrary, right? Yeah. Like it's just a probability role. How you you know. When you use it, how you use it, uh, means you need to have some kind of a, um, a creative starting point. Yeah. Uh, Stormcrow says, quick question. The biggest turtle I've found as a GM has definitely been making the stats for monsters and villains. How do I make level appropriate beasts for players? Um, well, my, my thing is I think that they're... Get rid of the idea of things being level appropriate. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a big one. For, first of all, it's you, there's obviously things that are going to be more powerful than the characters are at the moment, and if they choose to get in a fight with those things, that's on them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in a, in a it's, way, it's it. Um, I you, mean, you, 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 you can let go completely. It's it's yeah. not your responsibility to shepherd the um, the world right. for them. Right. right. If you pick a fight with the wrong guy. Yeah, you're gonna get hurt. Yeah, I mean, it's you see that it's like people get in street fights, and it turns out the guy's like a trained MMA fight, <laughs> right. fight champion or whatever. <laughs> and he just mops the floor with like a bunch of them. Like that happens. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is, I mean, it's like it depends on what game you're playing because yeah. uh, a game like Vampire the Masquerade is going to be a lot different than playing like D and D. Yeah. And if you have D and D, like the the older editions at least had, um, random encounter tables by mm -hmm. dungeon level and things like this so it's it's you're going to get something that is appropriate uh, more or less appropriate to the the challenge level of wherever they are within the world um but sometimes that can still mean that you're going to get something very very scary uh and that's yes. part of the fun that's yeah. that's that's the unexpected part of it but um yeah i would say uh don't really worry about that very much and, and, I would and say it, it kind of depends on what game you're playing yeah i and i would say for for villains <clears throat> Um, especially like a, you know, a, some sort of sapient adversary. Um, even in vampire, like I, I do not have character sheets for every single NPC that exists in the city. Yeah. Right. Like, are you kidding me? Like, and I know there are some people who do that. I think that's a, that's just a drain on your creativity and it's, it's, a, it's a drain on your time. It's, it's, and a, it's, and it's, it's as Sam Hyde has described. It's being, um, a it's it's being a busy idiot when yeah, you do that exactly you're creating you're wasting all of this time doing this really intense work on shit that doesn't matter yes uh and it's different if you're building a setting for people for other people to enjoy if you're just basically doing like here's a city and here's a shitload of characters that your people can run into yeah that's but a little that's, different yeah, that, that's different but if you're doing that for your game you know, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just a big, big yeah, waste of just, resources. <clears throat> you're just burning, burning oil that, that yeah. is not going to help you at all. Right. 
And even then, if I was building a city, I'm not going to do literally all of the inhabitants. I'm going to do right. the interesting people that like maybe, it, you know, like the person who owns the gladiatorial arena. But I'm not even know? going to like, <laughs> Something like that. Even but like, like, you know, like a major like uh, the person who owns the gladiatorial arena. Let's say uh -huh. he let's say he's he's a mid to high tier, you know, person of influence uh, in the city. Uh, I'm. By virtue of the f that fact, I'm not necessarily going to give them a full, you know, essentially character, character sheet, sheet stat block. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. You know, here here are the things that he knows. Here are the things that he's good good at from a, a mechanical standpoint. That's right. That's all that I really need need roll, to know. Roll his hit points. You know, when you need them, basically, mm -hmm. if they're going to fight him, and it's like, okay, this guy is a six level wizard or whatever. Mm -hmm. How many hit dice does that have? Roll, roll it up right there. You mm -hmm. know, figure. Uh, that's that's how I would handle yeah. that. Um, let me see here. Rex Teal, good to see you, man. Uh, we're more real, more recently realizing that OD and D plus Chainmail is ironically one of the more heroic versions of D and D. Hashtag by White Box. Yeah, go yeah. check out a uh, White Box on Drive Through RPG. It's White uh, Box is very cool. It's very cool. Um, Basic Expert did something very, very, very cool and very special with that. Um, and it's pay what you can as well. So, yeah. And a rarity in like the OSR space, I would say. It's not just a, we have to go back. No. Uh, like a recapitulation of or like a direct representation of something that was made 40 years ago. No. This is an actual different and interesting take. Yeah. Using because familiar the, rules. Right. But the, the idea was... It's 1974. D&D &D has just come out. Mm -hmm. All I have is Chainmail and the three LBBs. So you've got these three books. You've got Chainmail. You don't have any other resources. How do you make this game work? And at the time, people were making up tons and tons of uh, house rules. It was considered kind of an incomplete game. Gygax told people, you know, of course, make your own rules. You know, it's a, this D&D &D is too important to just be left to me. And then... It spawned a bunch of competitors, and yeah. he kind of changed his attitude tune. very quickly. On that. Um, but, um, no, no, not like that. Yeah, that's not what I meant. Um, um, but it's a, but it's a very cool thing because it's like taking a very uh, kind of systematic look at those two products and seeing how they actually work together and create this much more complete system. Yeah. Than uh, the first reading of OD and D. Um, yeah. Let's see here. We got Buckwhack in the house, it looks like, for $19.99. Oh, my goodness. Good God, man. Forgot this was today. I'm pretty sure MCDM is not in good standing <laughs> with the church. <laughs> well, that's the most important thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Buckwhack, for the $20 and for that hilarious comment. That would be so funny. To <laughs> if I don't know if Colville has to do stream somewhere. That would be so funny to mog his stream. <laughs> and to ban where, to, to <laughs> where do your spiritual allegiances lie? <laughs> okay, let's see here. Um, I think web DM guys were the ones who first showed me supply dice. Seems like a nice fella. Interesting. I don't know, I don't what, know what supply yeah. dice are. Poncho Goblin. Hello, says Vic Indeed is great. he is. Um, supply dice. Jumpsuit John. I have like four videos. We'll get to making more, my yeah, friend. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh... Broken Blade says I like WebDM. Cool. Uh, mostly appeals to normie D and D stuff, though. Okay. okay. Um, I think he's on Patreon. Another YouTuber covered the absence along with taking twenty. Hmm. Okay. Um, thank Christ, you guys stream every week. I feel like I run out of good RPG content so quickly <laughs> on this platform. That is yep. true. There's very little good RPG content on this platform. Oh my yeah. gosh! Another super chat for ten dollars. The gym says, step one, build hype. Step two, round one cash in on crowdfunding. Uh, round one cash in on <laughs> crowdfunding. <laughs> Ride this until hype is about to dip. Number three, change core mechanic, rebuild hype. <laughs> round four, <laughs> round two cash in. Five, when, st when money stops, <laughs> apologize and kill projects. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> The perfect crime doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't. I don't think it's it's like that. I just think. Uh, I don't think it's a cynical cash grab. I just think, it's just gonna be dog shit. Yeah. <laughs> Baldur's Gate three based percent speed run. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, can you give a short rundown of what Matt Colville thing is about? Yeah, I think we can switch over to that now. Um, yeah. One second. Switch here. Get back over here. All right. And then let's see if this works. Go to screen share. Oh, you're looking at the chat. Oh, fuck me. There we go. All right. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at this uh, Matt Colville video. Hey, folks, Matt Colville here. What is going on? I hate this man. <laughs> like, what, I, we were talking about this the other day. What, what's worse is people will look at this and say, this is a YouTube shtick. And obviously it's a little bit heightened, but right. I can tell by the physiognomy. I've watched enough videos to know this is how Matt Colville actually is. This yeah. is his true self on camera. Right. Forever, and it's that is so much worse. Again, it's like, oh, yeah. I would be so, so much happier if this was a cynical grift. Like, because <laughs> like, <laughs> I can at least respect the grift. <laughs> I can't respect this. No. I, I can't respect this sort of, what is it? It's this sort of like no no hard edges, soylent, uh, like, oh, it's just so it's so soft. It's it's like it's this, so soft. I was gonna say like the crystallization, but it's it's not. It's it's not a crystallization. It's more like the 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 liquefaction, yeah. of, <laughs> the putrefaction, yeah, the of putrefaction <laughs> of millennial nerd culture, yeah, yeah nerdism, yeah, yeah. you know. Which this he's is not a, <laughs> he's not a millennial, by the way, but it's it's exactly what yeah. that is. This is the man. It's just the been many moons. Yeah. Whoops. God damn it. I'm a boomer. Since last we spoke, and much has changed. Big things, little things. The dice are still the same. But what they do has changed quite dramatically. <sighs> like. Every yeah, time. Yeah, my, my <laughs> heck of I, dice arenos, they've changed, <laughs> dra changed dramatically. I'm here with my my puppers and my doggos. Like, uh, shut the fuck shut up. Shut the talk fuck like up. A, talk like a normal person. Yeah, like a human being, please. Stop, use, stop using baby speech. Yeah. That's a real word. It means drastically and dramatically. Dramatically. Don't bother looking that up. Uh, just just trust me. No. Shut the fuck All up. All right. <laughs> I think that's where I got the thumbnail picture. <laughs> that was how, that's how far I got last time. Um, let me see here. I got to move my chat to the other window. There we go. All right. Who gave us a super chat here? For $5, we got K Dolo. K Dolo again. Please don't play this. <laughs> I won't last this long against cringe of this magnitude. This is pure distilled <laughs> wheatness. <Yeah>. Wheatness. <laughs> we'll move through it quick. We're yeah. not gonna we're yeah. not gonna stay here for very long. For very long. And hey everybody, we had our first official playtest using our new proprietary VTT, our own virtual tabletop, thanks to our partners at DM Hub. It is amazing. They can implement our rules faster than we can design them, which is very nice. I just thought y'all would like to know the VTT is real. It is happening. You can already make a character. Well, you can't. We can make characters. Pick I hate that too, where it's, you can already, do, well, I mean, not you. We yeah. can do that. Yeah. Oh, so I funny. forgot you. Oh. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I, I like, I hate this, like this YouTuber shit that they yeah. do. I fucking hate it. It's like, a what? It, what is it? This is like. This this kind of of behavior <laughs> is this on one point five x speed? No, <laughs> <laughs> this is how this guy talks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's just keep going. Let's yeah. get through this. Like an ancestry kit, class, initiative works, and just everything. It is amazing. I can't wait for y'all to get your hands on it. In the meantime, yes, we have monkeyed with the dice and how they work. Some of you will really like it. Some of you will hate it, and some of you will be like. Yeah, we'll see. And thank some you, of you for that very interesting and yeah. very comprehensive, uh, like analysis of of <laughs> like what the effects of these decisions right. are. It's, it's some <laughs> of you are like, uh, don't have minds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna explain how it works and more importantly why it works the way it does. But before we get stuck in, I want to let you all know that our friends at Trenchworks are making a big box of goblins. We will talk more about this at the end of the video. Ooh, they are not here. paying yeah. us for this. We just like them and want them to succeed. Ooh, so like go it. check it out. Meanwhile, here at MCDM, we've been working hard on our new RPG. If it seems like progress has slowed, that's fair. But one of the things we intended to do if we funded was 
staff up, hire new people. Not a lot of new people, like like three new people. Actually, us hiring three people is a How lot. Many that is a lot of people hire? for us. And I made I the decision know. that we should Protesters prioritize maybe. hiring because the sooner we figure out who these people are and get them on board, the sooner they can help us get this game done. And we are doing that. That is working. This is not a call for applications. Our contact list is plenty long on its own. I just thought you should know we haven't been idle. Far from it. But hiring is a process and, and one you need to take seriously. And we do take it seriously. And we've made really good progress. Oh, my God. Progress in what regard? What does yeah. progress mean? Uh, Doc Flamingo for $5. Thank you very much, man. I'm, I'm not going to switch between the chat to, to highlight it, but he says... His head is a perfect square. <laughs> yes, it's like it someone is. drew him using the box method and forgot to erase the <laughs> guidelines. <laughs> yeah, he does have the physiognomy Uncanny. of one of those um, blocks from Super Mario Brothers. It's like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we didn't stop working on the game by no means. A lot of stuff has changed since last we spoke. It is basically impossible to catalog every little twist Despite and turn we've gone contrary, through in these videos. Promise, yeah. <laughs> but that's what the Patreon is for. The patrons get to follow all this stuff, so they already know all this. In fact, the patrons have already played the game. No. That's right, we sent out the first <laughs> Patreon packet back in oh December. Holy yeah. shit. It's been three months? Yeah, just about, yeah. We gave the patrons about a month to play the game and fill out the survey. Now, a, a uh, Pirella for five dollars. He looks like he only got halfway through the cosplay of his dad of the dad from Teen Wolf before giving up. If the dad had refused to go to go gray and dyed his hair, yeah. <laughs> Month isn't really that long. Yeah, that's the other thing. Um, don't dye your hair, guys. No. Don't dye your hair. Don't do it. Just go gray. And if you're losing your hair. Just shave it. Just your head. Sh yeah, just shave just it. Shave Buzz your head. cut it or shave it. I'm I and here's the thing. It's not idle talk. I'm gonna shave my head soon. So just shave your head, go bald, go gray, don't fucking paint your fucking hair. Well, as you probably know, it takes time to organize everybody's schedules, but in spite of this, we got tons of great feedback. People really played the game. We're not gonna go into all the sordid details about what we learned. We did a whole Patreon post about that. Spoilers. It was a lot. But in general, people were very happy with the game they played. Now, we know Ugh. people get excited for all Let's sorts of reasons, and you can't really yeah. hear. This is the problem we spent weeks trying to solve. People like knowing what's expected of them, and we like that. So on your turn, you should know which dice to grab. And we like... Who doesn't Who know doesn't that? Who doesn't fucking know that in any yeah. game? This is the thing he's like, you know what? We need to have the attack dice just be the same. For everyone. This is too complicated. Just like, you know, because it's very different in D&D. &D, right. Where everybody... <laughs> knows exactly... You gr just grab the D20. Yes. And you roll your fucking D20. Yes. But here you're doing 2D6, which is just way more streamlined. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly a yeah. self-evidently more elegant mechanic. Yeah. I like 2D6 because it gives us a nice spread. Your mom gives us... Shut up! Oh, shut a single damage up. die, like, like a D8... <sighs> You are just as likely to roll a one as an eight, even though one of these results is eight times greater than the other. Surely that means it should at least be a little less likely to come up. And from this, we get the swinginess that I believe contributes to slog. And that's why we went with at least two dice. One die, the best result is just as likely as the worst. Two or more dice, well, now the extreme results. Yes, we know how a fucking bell curve works. <laughs> Okay, you know what? We're not going to watch this video. I'm just going to tell you what this stupid fucking thing is. This retarded mechanic. So basically, the way that this works was that they had... The, uh, Colville, in these videos at least, has framed this as the problem in D&D. &D. One of the problems is that you are um, rolling an attack and sometimes you miss. And then you don't get to roll damage. You don't get to do anything. It's like you've been waiting for your turn and that's boring and missing sucks and it's not heroic. And so what they're going to do here was eliminate the attack roll and you're just going to deal damage. You just roll and you're dealing damage. So you're always making progress and you're like, this is a better psychology. It's a better, better psychological experience for the, for the player. Um, I first of all think that assumption is just stupid anyway. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 the it's like the video game designer 
mentality where if you don't engage like the dope the dopamine glands right uh People are going to leave in droves. If, yeah, if if the player is not pressing the come button <laughs> yeah. every turn, then you know that's bad. You know, oh, we got yeah. another super chat here. Got to address this first. From Victor, Victor Gorgiev. Oh my gosh, we're getting that, you, that, those uh, two two of those euro bucks. Uh, use this money to dye your beard <laughs> to be less garish. <laughs> <laughs> Dye your beard gray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. We love Victor. Everybody go subscribe to Victor Gorchev. Oh, yeah. that was good. Um, and of course, now I can't see this because the system tray is blocking my fucking <laughs> chat window. Oh, you son of a bitch. There we go. Uh, all right. So for $10, K Dolo says, uh, a better psychology is if instead of failing to, uh, to hit on a static roll, you lose in a contested roll, you get beaten instead of failing. Yeah, I like contested, I like, uh, contested are, rolls. Are, yeah. I, I, I like them as well. Uh, 499, the assumption that every attack hits is stupid. Yes, it's very stupid. Yeah. And, and, here's, and here's the thing, because I did um, elsewhere, and I won't go into too many details here, because uh, not only is he not here, but it was on a, you know, a private chat server, but... Uh, I was talking to Gelatinous Rube, and basically, this is just a very different type of game. This is a, a system that is like rock, paper, scissors, as opposed to simulating every single swing of the sword and attack and whatever. It's, it's a different kind of game, um, and the approach that they've taken to why they changed this rule and why they changed the attack roll was probably a, uh, a stupid marketing thing that they have dug their heels in on. Um mm. Because it's just fundamentally a different game. This, this, this whole, like the whole reasoning behind eliminate, like you just roll damage because it's not as fun to, to to roll attack and then roll damage, is retarded. It is right, absolutely retarded. Um, but the mechanic as it stood was supposed to be you're just rolling two d six for damage. Turned out that people did did like that they were just rolling damage, but they didn't like that everyone did the same damage. Which is retarded. That is a yeah. that is something to be concerned about. Right. So they have been re-engineering this mechanic a million different ways. Ah, oh, John Smith, thank you, man, for the ten dollars. Oh my god. Uh, let's see here. That's your fifth super chat. Jeez, thank you, man, for ten dollars. They can implement rules faster than we can design them. No shit. You can carve a source booking granite <laughs> with a paper towel faster than these guys can finalize I a know. rule set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they've had this core mechanic and they've changed it. This is like multiple, multiple iterations already because they keep finding problems with it. It's not working. Well, it's they not see, gelling. They keep seeing problems. Yes. Um, and so now the way the mechanic works is that you, everyone rolls 2d6 for every power you use, every weapon you use, whatever. And that roll result is the input to a chart. And the chart has three basically success tiers on it. You have a regular success, a good success, and a great success. And then maybe like a critical, if you have uh, like critical effects or whatever. That's It's like an and extra so, step to do the same thing. Everyone is still doing the same damage. Yeah, except it's instead, except of, it's instead worse. of looking at my character sheet and saying, okay, I roll 1d8 plus 2 for damage. Yeah, right. I have to look up what the specific fucking power does. Right, and it's all an the extra different effects. step for a worse result right. that is effectively the same. Right, it's it's going to take longer. And of course, I guess you could make this, put print this out on cards so you have all your powers or, or whatever. Right. But that shit is always annoying. The more that yeah. I have to sit there and look up specific named powers, the the more frustrating that is as an, as an experience. And this is, this is not what I took the vibe of the game initially to be, which was kind right. of capturing those those people who prefer f like 4E, more right. tactical combat, who have been sort of left in the lurch for uh, a long time. Yeah. Um, this is not going to be satisfying to them. Like, okay, even if there's a, some sort of a rock, paper, scissors um, mechanic, some some way in which one trumps... Yeah, so I yeah, however however it works with this sort of triad of, uh -huh. of outcomes, you know, rock, paper, scissors has a very limited scope of yeah. permutations. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't Yeah. Uh, it's gonna get old really fucking quick, and it's gonna get old even worse if you have to take an extra step right. to do an arbitrary abstracted, you know, minor, moderate, significant 
success right and in, in the the example they've given also is that it's like this power does this much damage at this level of the chart and this much damage at this one so it's like you're you're literally making me look up everything yeah every time which is really frustrating and i'm sure as you level up you're going to acquire more and more of these powers oh yeah it doesn't have to be the case that this ends up a big bloated mess but this is the kind of design pattern that is very easy to get into that big bloated mess territory. <laughs> like it's, yeah. uh, it's not, it's not good. Uh, so Kyle here for $10. Thank you so much for the $10, man. You guys are being Thank really you, so generous yeah. tonight and we very much appreciate it. Uh, for fuck's sake, I feel like I'm back in ninth grade learning Thacko again. <laughs> <laughs> Thacko at least makes Thacko sense. Thacko makes sense. Yes. And Thacko's easier than this. Yeah. Easier um, and quicker yeah. than this. And we are not Thacko enjoyers. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Poncho Goblin for four ninety nine. Thank you, man. Uh, Colville is trying to reinvent to hit matrices, but with 1% of the design talent of Gygax. <laughs> yeah. I know. This is the other thing is everyone complains about the, you know, the to hit table. And I'm one of these people that complains about the to hit tables in the yeah. old uh, D&D games. Yep. And now we've got something that's worse. And I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want this game anyway. I'm not the. We're not the target yeah, we audience. Would we, we were uh, never going to buy. this Yeah, we game. were never going to buy this game or play this game. But the simple fact is, he's he's showing everyone how the sausage is made with this game. Nobody wants to he's see showing, that. He's showing how the sausage doesn't get made. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the real immersion. Go yeah. come to the sausage factory tour and imagine what it would be like. <laughs> <laughs> we're reinventing like, the sausage making process yeah. every time that you show up <laughs> oh god it could be anything yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> oh man uh bodacious alan for five dollars thank you man tell everyone how candela obscure is the superior combat <laughs> system and how you love the setting yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you man for the five bucks um yeah, but it's it's fucking retarded. It's like that you've taken something that was simple. And by the way, you don't have to split your attack and damage roll into two steps. You can roll a d20 and your damage dice at the same time and yeah. then just apply the damage if right. you hit. Yes. Like this is not uh we don't even like d20 games. This like I I'm sitting here <laughs> defending the basics of a system that I'm not even all that interested in to begin with. Yeah. But but the thing is that system makes sense. It functions. It functions. It makes sense. And the, oh God, it's just, this yeah. is so stupid. It's so stupid. And more than, more than anything else, like what, this is like, this is all so retarded, but this just goes to show what my biggest problem is, is they don't, Colville doesn't know, doesn't have a vision um, that he's trying to like align the mechanics for. I have right. this thing in mind I'm trying to emulate. <laughs> I'm trying to make real in a mechanical way. And so I have I have an objective standard by which right. to measure whether these mechanics work or not. And because they're trying they don't have that, they're trying to find this platonic ideal of perfect gameplay loop, you know, dopamine hit, uh, you know, what like um Eternal, they want the eternal motion machine or whatever the fucking thing mm -hmm. is called. You know, the, the perpetual motion, perpetual motion, motion machine out of, you know, you know, you, you put the input into the mechanics and it, and it just, it's a, it's a constant cycle of like dopamine and reward and challenge and reward. That's not how anything works. Yeah. You're not going to get anything. Uh, meaty byproducts for five dollars. Thank you very much. Auto hit system, black sword hack. You then roll to dodge dexterity or roll to parry by dex. Way simpler and smarter than anything MCDM will think of. Yeah, yeah. Th this is so like, exactly what you're saying is that it like the idea should be I have a vision of something that I, I, this is how I want the game to feel. I want this, is this is what it's supposed to emulate, and then you, you try to make mechanics that are going to fit that they basically from what their videos say maybe and maybe their videos are not how they're actually thinking about this but that would be insane right the videos are basically like we really liked 2d6 we're gonna make 2d6 <laughs> rolling for damage work to be heroic and, and all this other stuff and it's like they started backwards like, it's like what they are you started even talking with about? dice that they liked yeah. <laughs> and, want to, and want to build the game around that yeah. as opposed to starting with what the game is supposed right, to be right, like right. and trying to engineer mechanics 
that, that actually <laughs> create that experience. You roll 2D, 2d6, but you can only roll 2d6 for the combat resolution if the di if the d6s have the pips. If, yeah. the, if, the, if they have number values on them, that's for a different mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> Mayor McCheese for $5. Uh, Colville broke the two rules of game design. Don't reinvent the wheel, correct? And if you do reinvent the wheel, don't use a fucking triangle. <laughs> God, you guys are great. K Dole over five dollars. Thank you, man. Uh, if the D twenty system is good, it's only because there's enough historical inertia that no amount of purple haired weirdos are capable yeah. of overcoming them. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't. I don't. It's not ideal, but also ideal, but like it, the D twenty works. works. Yeah. It is functional. Right. I can follow this. Yeah, I can follow this and I can also, you know, you can come up with modifiers. Yeah. And, and like there's it makes sense. And here's here's the thing. The kinds of kind of game I want to play is not one of like tactical tag team like fan, Final Fantasy Tactics, you know, on a grid that's so not what I'm interested mm. in at all. I want to play a game that has rules that I want the game to be not necessarily realistic, but whatever the whatever genre it's playing, it, it is. And I tend to like genres that are a little more uh, tamped down and subdued. Things that aren't super over the top. Every once in a while, I like some games that are have a really high power level or whatever. But I like games that are a little more realistic. I it's, it's I like that vibe, mm -hmm. and I want the rules to execute the, the the actions that I'm trying to do. You know, it's like if I am attempting to hit someone i know that in the real world you don't always hit people <laughs> right you don't always hit that sometimes you miss uh -huh. and the rule is there to see if i succeed or fail it's there to kind of simulate you know me attempting to do that thing correct like i want mechanics that work in that way so this idea of like you don't roll to hit i don't like that just to begin with mm -hmm. not because I think you can't have a functional game that that has, you know, roll like just start rolling damage. I mean, you've got Lone Wolf Fists. I haven't played it yet, but I am very intrigued. That does do, you just roll damage. Um, but I, the assumption that you needed to get away from that is so, it's just like so antithetical to everything that I like in a, in a game. Right. Like I want something that's going to feel sort of realistic and I want to be able to attempt to do things and when things, when there is a chance of success or failure, I want to roll for it, you know, to actually it, it, see it if the, shows there's he an, has a bad fair taste. Outcome. Yes, that's that's essentially it. That's his worst horrible taste. That is his worst crime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see here. Do you cats enjoy Pathfinder 2e? I haven't played. I played one game of Pathfinder 2e. Um, I I don't have any experience with it. I don't know. I started gaming with Pathfinder one one e. I understand all the criticisms of it. It's definitely not my preferred game, although I do like it. I've said it before because of the, the nostalgia of it. Um, it takes me back to when games were, were new. So uh, I'll always have a, a spot for right. Pathfinder 1. And uh, thank you again, Victor Gorchev, for the, uh, the two... Um I'm assuming it's like doubloons or whatever the fuck yeah. you use in your country. <laughs> Pieces um, of eight. Yeah. <laughs> Tipping young uh, Steve Buscemi for showing his feet. Thank you. We do Thank try you. to provide as many feet Much picks as, as possible. Um, yeah. Oh, and one more thing. The thing about this this whole like your role as an input to a chart, it's not a single chart. It's not like one big attack matrix. Yeah, it's everything gets every its own power. Chart. Yeah, every yeah, yeah. power, every ability, every weapon has its own chart. And it follows the same numbers. You know, it's always going to be you know, like two to six or whatever is, is success tier one, seven to 10 is this one, 11 to 12 is three, you know, it's like you always know what the categories are, but it's still like every fucking power has that. And I, that also like, it implies such like a weaselly cowardly demeanor in that it's like, okay, <clears throat> everyone is going to get the same result, i.e. the, the probability spread on um, on on two d six. So you know, here's me. You know, giving you giving you something, but now everything is a little is a little bit different. I'm sort of you know uh, pull, pulling it back here. It's like it seems like there's this like ebb and flow of of um or this give and take of like 
what would, what would you say? Um, like conciliation and trying in a weak-willed manner to impose some kind of a vision or an aesthetic yeah. and as limited and like broken away as possible. It's just, it, this is so bad on so many different levels. It's, yeah. It really, it really is, it is amazing. Truly retarded. Uh, let me see here. Space King of space. Good RPG is like a warm bath. Immersive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like charts, try Rollmaster. And he did bring up <laughs> Rollmaster in the video, I think. Uh, which I don't, I've never. I've read. never, I don't yeah. know. I know it exists. Mac Attack 01 for $5. Thank you, man. A great GM can make a lackluster set of rules into a fun game session. Yeah. As long as the players buy into the premise uh, that they're there to have fun. Yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah, but at the same, yes, you can. But that's but, not an excuse for a bad product. Yeah, exactly. When, you're, when you've taken millions of dollars right. from people. And I don't, <laughs> I don't, as a game master, want to run a game with a shitty rule set. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I don't have to. I don't have to settle for that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's come back up here. <laughs> Meaty Byproducts. Uh, Poncho Goblin, I run an RPG library, and I talk to new game designers a ton. That is my number one rule to share. Nice. What is that? Oh, I wonder, do you do the, uh, is it the Library of Alexandria? I think if if you are, then we've talked on Twitter before, and this guy's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, um, I, there was someone, I don't know if it was you or if it was someone else, um, I went to uh, PAX Unplugged the first year, mm -hmm. um, uh, the first year of, of the con, because I was still living in Philadelphia at the time, um, and there was someone there uh, who had uh, a library of like really really old uh out of print mm -hmm. games or out of print editions of games it was really interesting some really obscure and cool stuff i think there were some tecamel books or, or empire of the petal throne books uh -huh. uh, which was really cool to see uh vladimir harkonnen saying getting rid of t uh to hit excuse me I can't. I'm illiterate. <laughs> Getting rid of hit chance makes perfect sense when you realize they think of RPGs as board games with a uh, occasional dramatic flavor. Yeah. I just I don't it I don't think it's board games. It's it's video games. To me it's 100% clear oh, yeah. video games are the main source of inspiration. Right. And again, we like video games, I like but they video do games. different things better and worse than RPGs. Yeah. And this is I'm not so stupid as to think that how I feel and how I react when I'm playing a video game is how I, I, I should feel or I will feel when I'm, when I'm playing, playing a role-playing a, a, a role game. game. Yeah, it's, it's completely ridiculous. I don't and this, want that, and I know that that's impossible this, and retarded. And this approach of like designing this like a video game and, and all this other dog shit is it's like you're making inverse Blade. You know, you have the Daywalker... <laughs> But instead of having all of the, the strengths of both and none of the weaknesses, you've inverse, inverted that and you've got Blade, <laughs> except he's a white guy who doesn't wear a trench coat or sunglasses <laughs> and he has all of their weaknesses <laughs> and none of the strengths of either. That's what this sort of design <laughs> is going to produce. The you worst know, thing possible. The worst thing possible. The worst elements of role-playing games combined with the worst elements of, of, <laughs> of video the games. Stillborn creative enterprise. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. I thought Colville's hair color showed his bad taste. Well, that's true. Also yeah. true. There are many pieces of evidence. Right. Uh, with all these super chats coming in, I fully expect to see an on-screen lap dance by the end of the stream. Uh, that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are not that degenerate. <laughs> uh, you nailed it. I was thinking about that. I should make a board game where the players can make their own characters. Well, and, and here's the thing is that he really is a big fan of like 4E, which it's not a board game, but it's more of like a fantasy skirmish game. And that's right. It's more sort of a tabletop of, war game. Right. I, not even necessarily a war game, though. It's like it's like a it's like a like skirmish for like small yeah, yeah, yeah. Small something like uh, uh, is that what Blood Bowl is? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but but yeah. even that, you know, even forty, you could miss. I'm assuming. Yeah, it's still a D twenty. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still a D twenty or whatever. Um, uh, let me see here, Ryan Fokker. I mean, Nick is already showing feet to feed the D gens. That's true. True. Yeah. Jeff Rose saying immersive. That's right. 
He is he is our resident expert on Im- immersive, immersive role playing immersive games. Immersive role playing games, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's you know he's why we got into immersive role playing games. <laughs> um, is there even a game that is like Black Sails brought to the table? I don't know. Uh, Black Sails is so good. Holy shit! Um, they recreated the worst parts of DCC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there needs to be more pirate games. There is a game uh, called Seven C, which I don't really like, <laughs> but uh, there are some interesting. Um, mechanical elements. Uh, if I, it's been years since I I played it, uh, uh-huh. which is funny because I I have the book. Um, I think you're looking for. You roll. I think it's a. If I remember correctly, it's a d6 dice. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> roll those back. Colville is a carny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd check out 7C is what I would say. Yeah. That's a high age of sale um, or golden age of sale. Um, 2D6 world. is predictable. A D12 is better for the unpredictable nature. Um, yeah, I think that's what uh, is used in Horde Wars as uh, a D12 game. Oh, nice. You see here. Classic Traveler where you divide the actual damage dice among your strength, end, and dex. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, bu- 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 um, insulting carnies, correct. Uh, mm-hmm. When Bloodlines 2, at Black Lodge game, uh, comes out, I assume, Black Lodge games should shit on that after a playthrough so we can collectively come together in our hate. Yeah. Oh, and I'm... someone, I think, asked us if we had, uh, way, way up in the chat at the very beginning, asked if we had ever played Bloodlines 1, and the answer is obviously yes. Yes, many <laughs> like, times. Like, many times. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, it's fucking great. It's so good. And Bloodlines 2 is it's going be- to be... Bloodlines is better than any game of Vampire you've ever played. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's way better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Masquerade is such a, would be such a good game if it weren't for all these freaks. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, and Bloodlines 2 will be yeah. dog shit. I'm gonna assume that Mercurius, uh, Alicious. I, I can't see. It's very I the can't. chats. The super chats are very small uh, on on our screen. The rest of the chats are large, but yeah. they don't, this doesn't scale with the UI. Anyway, thank you for the five dollars. Thank you. I'm assuming you tried to say something. Um, but we got we media by, byproducts. Uh, yes, Alexandria RPG is over eight thousand books now and hits between fourteen to seventeen nice. events a year. Yeah. So this is the dude. Yeah, this guy's awesome. By the way, so go uh, go fo- go follow. Uh, the uh, Alexandria RPG on Twitter as well. Um, Bloodlines is the platonic t- ideal of, of VTM. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, uh, I agree with your assessment of the MCDM product. Thank you. Yeah. Much obliged. Yeah, and we will be. Uh, we're looking forward to talking to you next week, man. I do apologize. Absolutely. I did get sick. Yeah. Um, and I'm still recovering, but but we're here this week, and we will be here next week. Indeed. Uh, let me see here. Uh, the focus in old school D&D is to achieve a goal that leads to adventure, such as treasure. Combat is not designed or balanced to be the focus, but is one of many obstacles to the goal. Um, correct. Uh-huh. And you also, someone, I don't know, people were saying, you know, is, oh, is D&D a combat game? Uh, that was like the big retarded conversation going on for a while. And it's not that it is a combat game. It's that combat will happen and it needs rules to describe how to do it. Yes, and it to is determine a common these, occurrence. It's a, it's a common enough occurrence of rather complicated behavior. And so you need more rules for combat than you do for having a conversation. Like, that's just all there is to it. Right. Uh, let me see here. I want access to the Trove again. Those were good times. It still exists uh, out there, yeah. man. It's not called the Trove anymore, yeah. but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you want 7C, 1E, not 2E. It's a roll and roll and keep system with D10 and they explode. That's right. It is. It is D10. I, I do like D10. I, or I do like exploding dice, even yeah. though Mr. Max says they're for midwits. Um, I am interested in checking out 1E. I do, <laughs> unfortunately, have 2E and it is uh, rough in many ways. It is definitely laden with the message. Right. I always describe 4E as a, a good tactical miniatures oh, game shit, with RPG it's elements. Trevor. Blood Bowl is literally fantasy football. Orcs taking halflings. It's cool. Wasn't Tackling there a halflings. video game on the Genesis for Blood Bowl? Uh, probably. Onion Kid, by the way, is one of uh, the OG the OG subscribers, like from like ten years ago. Yeah, and Bef- the OG, one of the OG immersive role players, right. who is 
Uh, better than most people. Most people. Better than everyone in the chat. Better than everyone in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, a, it is an unforgivable crime that he has not returned to YouTube. Yeah. Obviously, 2D6 is inferior to the 100 size golf. Yeah. <laughs> 100 size golf ball dice. Why stop at 100? Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to it. And we got, let's see here. Bloodlines does include a Wraith cameo, so you're not wrong. Interesting. Uh, bu -bum -bum. Oh, someone tagged us down here. He's thinking of Mutant League Football from EA Sports. Oh, yeah. Mutant yeah. League Football. Hell Didn't yeah. they make a cartoon out of that? I don't know. I think there was a cartoon in the 90s. There might have been. Shauner says, Onion Kid, come back to YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's you, a rare thing for Shauner yeah. to say. <laughs> Everyone else leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, X2 is doing some good work with ship rules in combat, uh, though it's not Age of Sail. Yeah, I... I have not read the ship combat. I've not read the, the Voyages chapter of Acts mm. 2 yet because I've been uh, needing to reference the Adventures chapter so much more. Yeah. Um, and I, we're not near the ocean right yeah. now, so right. I don't suspect anybody getting on ships. Um, yes, there was a Mutant League cartoon. I knew it. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. What is the successor to the Trove? Well... Uh, that is easily found out. I'll, <laughs> it's not not well hidden. <laughs> Check 4chan. Yeah. Uh, Archon is literally doing a naval campaign, which will likely become a book once it's done. A source book or a novel? Who knows? I don't know. What is this? I missed it. Um, Archon is, Archon is uh, doing a naval campaign right now. So he just, he's just oh, 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 doing okay. another... Another uh, like live, live play. play. Yeah. Got it. Interesting. Uh, uh Mac Attack for $5. 7C2E is far superior if you like maps, which are much improved. John Wick was so proud of the art. The maps are good. Of two sort of guys. John Wick was so proud of the art of, of two sort of guys kissing in the core book. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of... Uh, it's very... Uh, as, uh, as, as my dad, Tony Soprano, would say... This sounds very gay. Yeah. <laughs> which it is. Rolling Bones saying, Brother Grognard, are you a Fed? Legally, you have to tell me. I will say that Brother Grognard, if he is a Fed, we're probably going to go to jail because uh, <laughs> he's been to our meetup um, and he knew all the things to say that were cool about RPGs. So, <laughs> um, dun, dun, dun. Crafty's here. How's it going, Crafty Matt? Good to see you, man. Hey. And Malachi, I know you've been here the, the quite a while, but hello to you as well. Uh, we have up oh, Edens. We got another ten dollars. God, thank you. You guys are being, you guys out of your mind. Yeah, out of your minds. Making up, making up for our, us not streaming last week. Jeez, <laughs> thank you so much. We really, really do appreciate this. Uh, somehow, predictably, became a positive. Overcoming the odds, overcoming your character's flaws, coming up against your character's ideals, and whether they succeed. What truly makes a good game a great game? Right, or what makes heroism mm -hmm. in general, or what, what makes anything dramatic, dramatic, or heroic. Right. It's, uh, a, it's a complete decoupling of, of like, the underlying value. You know, it's like, it, it's, it's, a car, it's a cargo cult of, mm -hmm. of heroism, or of drama, or of uh, anything engaging. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we maximize the output of what heroic behavior is, it will therefore be not only be heroic, but it will be more heroic. Yeah. It'll be better heroic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which TTRPG systems do you prefer for Age of Sail naval combat? I don't know. I've never done it. I haven't done it, but I have thought of that. It is an interesting gap in, like, the marketplace. There's not... Yeah, and there's it, no, like... There's a huge... You know, like, that's master very and engaging. commander sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, there's no master yeah. commander. Or even if you want to do, like, a fantasy, like, Pirates of the Caribbean mm -hmm. thing... Um, yeah, which is too is too bad. Uh, Age of Sail. Maybe Mark X. Until, I don't know. I haven't read, I haven't read those rules yet, though. <laughs> um, not sure. What the fuck? Is this fifty dollars? A fifty dollars. Maybe Australian fifty dollars. Anyway, thank you. Jesus, that's still. Uh, thank you, uh, Calic. Calic. Calic Mick. Is that what it says? It looks. It, I guess it's two people. So it's Calic. It has to be Calic and Mick. Huh. Right. There's two we people truly on appreciate the... you guys and your authenticity. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Um, this is very generous of you. Have we tried Pirate Borg? No. Is no. That like Morkborg? Yeah, it's another. It's a Morkborg. 
thing. I'm not a, a tremendous fan of of Morkborg. I do mm -hmm. I do like the aesthetic of it. I the the yellow and black it really pops. It's really cool. I do like the idea of like okay, this is you're living in a death metal album like world. <laughs> that's that's cool. I I like it. Um but uh I played it once. I played the the um Did I play it or did I no, I ran it. What am I talking about? Uh, I I ran the like the oh, adventure in, in the book, and I was uh, satisfied. This is this is pretty good. Jeffro Johnson said this in my chat, but MCDM <laughs> wants to make Rocky three, but Clubber Lang <laughs> doesn't beat Rocky at the end of Act One. <laughs> that would have been a way better movie, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Morkborg is such a poser game. You poser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's easy to s strip out the undead and just have a simple pirate game. Um, yeah. That, thought yeah. Yeah. Thoughts on GURPS. A lot of the points you've made about heroism are possible in many modular options for the system, being able to keep fighting after zero HP, for example. I have never played or read GURPS. Yeah. Um, we do have a subscriber who has been uh wanting to talk to us about gurps at some point but since none of us neither of us have any yeah um, which i would be really interested in talking about because I, I would but i need to read some of it first like i, I don't right. have no idea i don't even know what dice it uses yeah i don't know and from what i understand you can't just buy gurps you have to buy you know a shit ton of source books because of how GURPS is, or is organized. If you want to cater it, <laughs> if you want to make it real, you, like, you <laughs> the way it's organized to take money from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now let's see here. We got a uh, Poncho Goblin for four ninety nine. Thank you, man. For naval combat, I would honestly recommend uh, porting in an Age of Sail, Sail naval war game like Heart of Oak from Line of Battle or Fighting Sail. Cool. I've never yeah, heard that, of any I mean, of those that might not, That's not a bad idea. Why not? Why wouldn't you just use a, an actual war game set for that? Um, mm. That does make sense. Because, like, the ship's not the character. You know. You can do the character stuff using an RPG rule set, but yeah. if there's a superior rule set for the ships, <laughs> you know? Like, well, yeah, you, that, has to, yeah. That, that has to matter. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, but what if you were has playing Farscape? And the ship. And the ship. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> Neckbeard has never, uh, Neckbeardy has never recovered from Morkborg or however the hell you spell it. I don't know what that means. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure what, yeah. what uh, that's in reference to. Uh, I hear Pirate Borg is one of the better iterations of Morkborg. It has more rules and the art is a bit more tamed. I haven't played it though, so keep that in mind. Maybe. I. We're going to hold you responsible know, personally yeah. if this game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was their latest iteration. Maybe they've, they've mm -hmm. done something since Pirate Borg. But. Yeah. I would hit the like button, but YouTube has changed the interface and I literally cannot find the thumbs up. Wow. What the fuck? I don't even Conspiracy. know if the like button does anything, you know? Like, we like, I like it. It gives me dopamine when I see you guys <laughs> press the like button, but, you know, we've had videos that have, like, shitloads of likes compared to the number of views that they have. And it's like the views are still low. Right. <laughs> so it's like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> but we do appreciate it. Yes. We do like dopamine. Uh, the problem with mass, this is Mr. Max. Uh, the problem with mass combat or naval combat in RPGs, that the rules often take you out of character. You control more than your character. You have bird's eye view of what is happening. Yeah. 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 That would be the, the temptation for that would be, much higher right uh buy the source books pdfs are click away <laughs> <laughs> there is a farscape rpg i'm sure there I'm is sure i'm there sure is. it's bad too <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> somebody dig up these fanboys a copy of vtm gurps so they can hate it properly <laughs> I, there was a copy of vtm gurps in um the game store in mm -hmm. virginia which i never bought because i I knew it would be a waste of my money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Edens asks, Candela Obscura doesn't define combat. What game defines combat too much? Um, I just had an answer for this. I can't say this with, with experience, but uh, what is that? Burning Wheel? Uh, oh, yeah. Because... Burning Wheel defines everything too much. Yeah. <laughs> 
because of that. <laughs> and Mr. Max has videos on Burning Wheel. Yeah. How to play it and whatnot um, and what its problems are. Those are separate videos, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. And I think he said something like the the damage resolution mechanics are described over the course of like 56 pages or something crazy. Yeah. Like just for resolving damage in combat. Uh, that's insane. That is too much detail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If you're if it's literally not playable, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> oh man, hero does gurps better. You have to hide the chat. You have to hide the chat to see the area with the buttons. Ah, uh, got it. The deep lore. Uh, funny because I had a whole cyberpunk campaign from the premise that the players are cops in the same precinct deal, dealing with all Night City's shit was awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. It's I mean, well, that gimmick. was one of the things too. Like in Cyberpunk, like police was an option, right? Like yeah, you could play the cops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that that's, sounds that's one of the coolest awesome. things about um, Cyberpunk is every like meaningful. Uh, what would you say? It's a, it's not an archetype, but like it every, every sort of archetypical occupation or type of person in a cyberpunk world is there and they wouldn't necessarily all be on the same side a nomad is not necessarily going to get along with uh with a um with a corpo yeah we got as we indicated in our in our live play (laughs) (laughs) holy shit pigs are flying because i agree with shauna on something (laughs) fatal defines too much i don't know i think a lot of games just haven't really Put enough thought into calculating anal circumference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the guys that make the board games are left sympathizers, although on Mork Borg it doesn't show. See, I don't care though. Like the thing is, if as long as the game is promoting not in the, game. the message, you know, right. it's not. It's the game itself is not. Like when the game is propaganda, that's when I hate it. That is yes. when I hate a game. But if someone has different politics and they make a, a good game or a fun game, then I have. Zero problem with that. Yeah, like I'm I'm running uh Prowlers and Paragons, and from mm-hmm. what I recall, um the guy who made it is uh apparently like an insufferable shit lib. He was on mm-hmm. that like blacklist that went around of like well companies last year or the year before, whenever that whenever that was. But it's not <clears throat> the message is not um you know, transmitted anywhere in the product. And it's a good, it's a, yeah. it's a great superhero game. Yeah. Uh, if you ever want to chat about any RPGs, let me know. I'll be happy to chat. Yeah, man, we will definitely yeah, talk to you definitely. someday. Um, we play in cops for real. We play in cops for pay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, we got another super chat. Thank you, Mac Attack. I think this thank is you. like, how many? Yeah, you know, you're a bunch crazy. Of super you're chats. out of your yeah, mind. Out of your you. mind. Yeah, we thank you very much for your enthusiasm and your hard-earned cash, man. Uh, $5, thank you. YouTube algo currently weighs comments and watch time more heavily than, than uh, likes. Yeah, which is a, a better measure, honestly. Yeah. Uh, yes, there is a Farscape RPG by AEG by uh, Ken Carpenter. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, bu- 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 <laughs> oh, boy, is it dunk on Monk Bonk Hour? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paisau gives the group a trigger warning in their ca- uh, in their campaign where the player characters are cops. <laughs> <laughs> Holy oh shit. Oh my god. That's fucking that funny. That's so fucking funny. I have to find I have to find that. Yeah. I have to find that. Holy shit. That's so funny. Yeah, I would say like a game that is basically just <laughs> <laughs> A game that is propaganda is Candel Obscura. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And it's bad propaganda too. Like it's it's <laughs> Yeah, it's, it doesn't work. It, <laughs> it's really bad propaganda. Um but yeah, if, if a game's not, like, I don't care. Like, a bunch of people, mo- <laughs> look, my politics are, sh- like, really weird and really specific. And if I wasn't okay with interacting <laughs> with people who didn't have the same the politics, house. yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'd have a pretty lonely existence. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, let's see here. What happens if I play Cyborg and everyone decides to be a corpo uh, agent? Will they kick down my door? Probably. Probably, because you. there's no way you paid for those <laughs> for, for that cyberware. <laughs> <laughs> this says we got another super chat, but I don't see it. 
maybe it's a um a notification that's catching up with oh it's just this yeah yeah, yeah you're right that's the old one okay that one how do i get down here all right uh double d thinks evil hat hat's the worst i i i don't maybe maybe they are i don't know i don't well follow. i mean it's like that tomb raider game sounds like it's just propaganda that's evil hat oh okay so like that, yeah i mean like yeah that's, that's clearly propaganda yeah, yeah. i'm not paying for that <laughs> right <laughs> the game sounds like garbage anyway uh no so we're not be. playing thirsty swords lesbians not tonight no no um that's on Wednesdays. Yeah. <laughs> it's on our secret channel that no one's found yet. <laughs> uh, the funniest part about the cop campaign is that to keep the looting like a normal D&D campaign, the players are funded by civil <laughs> asset forfeiture. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be. <laughs> I, is, I, I wonder if that's if that's that has to be in one of their adventure paths. Yeah, is what it has to be. And I wonder, I wonder if that would uh, have the same outcome as has happened a lot recently, where the leftist message goes for full circle and becomes <laughs> becomes inadvertently based. Yeah. Probably not, but that would be yeah. hilarious. I don't know if you ever saw it. Uh, thank you for the $5. Uh, Hackmaster came out with their core book had a huge list of outrageous trigger warnings as a joke. That was 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't awesome. played a uh, Hackmaster. That is funny. Yeah. Again, it's like, um, it not as, as nuanced, uh, but, um, like white wolf had their, um, Oh God, black dog, their black dog publishing. Yeah. 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 For like the really, that's the one where they, I think they published the Spectre's book under Black Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember if Sins of the Blood was Black Dog. It might have been. There's a, it, yeah. was, it was for the stuff that was like really racy and like really disgusting. <laughs> um, have you heard about their Cthulhu book? I'm assuming this must be Evil Hat. I have not. I'm, I'm surprised they, they're able to do Cthulhu with um, Chaosium. Uh, but then... Um, no, I, I guess they could license. Oh, I don't know. I, I haven't. I haven't heard about it. Oh right, Tomb Raider. So Laura gives the artifacts back to their culture. So who gets <laughs> the Ark of the Covenant? Who gets the Hand of Midas? This is why Finders Keepers is better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Well, if if you're playing the assorted characters. Uh, as Mag Attack Vine the... for that least fiscally responsible viewer title. Love it. <laughs> 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 Accidentally based is one of my favorite tropes, yeah. Oh, yeah. Always funny when you see it. A, an old friend of mine from the ancient days of YouTube had an incredible uh, series of videos called Agreeing with Liberals for the Wrong Reasons. Yeah. Um, that was just simply amazing. Yeah. Um, that was, I think his name was Marakio. Uh, he, was, <laughs> he was basically like, he did all these like music parody videos. He uh -huh. was basically like a really racist weird owl. <laughs> <laughs> he was very funny, but his shit would not let make it on YouTube today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hackmaster, let me see here. Uh... John Smith, been going through the new one, Oath Hammer. It's simplified burning wheel and lovely for it. Oath Hammer is simplified burning wheel? Interesting. Huh. I don't know about that. Fair enough. White Wolf's April Fool's book back in the day was the most fantastic, edgy, cringy shit. Yeah. Those days I, are behind yeah, us. Yeah, it's gone. They don't have a sense of humor anymore. It's impossible. No. Uh, that's egotistical. Even if the narrative is they're all bad, of course people want to play it. People enjoy playing evil characters. I'm not sure what that's in. Yeah, he's responding to, to Poncho, Poncho Goblin. Goblin. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it's a response to. Apologies. Uh, Mac Attack again. Yes, John Smith, and damn it, I'm gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do appreciate your financial, <laughs> fiscal irresponsibility. <laughs> Uh, Meraki is still out there if you can find him. Yeah. Hint, hint, telegram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I was friends with him on Facebook for a long time. Um, I don't have Facebook anymore. Uh, but yeah, he started out as like an ANCAP and then <laughs> not what I would call an ANCAP later on. <laughs> Is uh, One second, guys. Okay, we're back. <laughs> uh, racist Weird Al sounds like Rucka Rucka Ali. Well, yeah, I mean, sort of. They were doing different, different sorts of things. Uh, Rucka, <laughs> thankfully, uh, he actually he did live here in in Austin for quite a while. Uh, these two lights that are pointing at us uh, once belonged to Rucka Rucka Ali, as well as one of our green screens, and he passed those off to me. Before he attempted to move to Israel on like <laughs> October 1st. <laughs> so he uh, didn't move to Israel. <laughs> uh, but we like Rucka. He's a, he's definitely, he's friend of the show. <laughs> objectively correct and objectivelessly correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Instead of playing against something, why not play for something? Uh, what you resist persists. If you just speak truth and reality constantly in the face of the attempts to silence, I don't know what that means. Uh, um, I mean, it is, it's generally good, uh, I think, to play mm -hmm. something heroic yeah. that has a positive vision. It's definitely not done. Meraki is still around. He's a good dude. Yeah, he, that's good to hear. Um, I know he's still he's still friends with my friend Manny. Um, we haven't talked to him in a long time, but that's also because he has a child now. Um, uh, man, Manny ran the. I can't. I won't tell his his whole name, but he back when face before Facebook really clamped down on meme mm -hmm. groups, Manny had the best meme group on Facebook. It was so incredible. <laughs> like all of the funniest shit was there. Before anywhere else, it was great. <laughs> Meraki was a was a constant contributor. Um, dun dun dun. Why? What happened in Israel? <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, if you think you're based, you've never <laughs> okay. never had an Africa. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you're not wrong. Not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'd pay another five dollars to hear that muted comment. I bet we could get Mac in on that. Action. <laughs> I'm based. My wife's African. <laughs> you guys have been posted on Bang a lot lately. Uh, if you know, you know. I don't. Know. I don't know. He Man Muty haters. Yes. Holy shit! You were in He Man Muty haters. <laughs> I mean, the the name changed over time. My friend. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. That's a deep cut. <laughs> uh, have you guys read the, the blog, The Tao of D&D? &D? Uh, man blogging for 15 years does not tolerate buzzword shit. Great stuff on how to DM well. I have not. Hmm. Nope. I haven't read it. Um... Wow, we're almost caught up. I mean, we did skip large swaths of the chat. Yeah. Uh, it's a forum on a website we're not allowed to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Along with everyone, Meraki was there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we're getting posted on. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> This will be the last stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh. <laughs> Let me Holy see. Holy shit. Maybe get Matt Colville has a point. You guys should revise the dice system for Dr. Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have plenty of That'll plenty require of an, an additional $2 million to yeah. you know, get that going. As a, as a, a chief consultant on the product. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Uh, Rucka, I know that guy. He's an objectivist, someone that pretends to be an objectivist, but is just a leftist. 
I assure you, Rucka is uh, is pretty based. <laughs> I need a Fraser RPG. <laughs> D6 Star Wars is uh, why we got the EU and is now an open system that anyone can make a game for. Hmm. Huh. Surely not Star Wars Show itself, us more of the Colville cringe or maybe pick a random advice video of his. Ugh. I don't want to, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to watch that shit. Yeah, there's nothing of value yeah. to be gleaned. <laughs> gleaned there. Yeah. Yeah. Well. We did it. We did it, yeah. I mean, we still end. technically got 15 minutes left. But That's true. I feel like I kind of talked about what I wanted to talk about. Yeah. What about you? Have you missed anything? No, I mean, I just, I really, I really hate the, uh, this retarded obsession with, like, mechanics as first principles, right? Oh, yeah. It's so dumb, and so many people fall into that into that trap. Um, yeah, it's like. But I've hated on that already. It's trying. It's like trying to a prioristically create the yeah. game. Like <laughs> again, it's it's the, the we the, we the have the pre, we have like, the premise of two d six. Right. The game will is the logical conclusion yeah. of two d six. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the forum that you speak of is RPG Net. Uh, if so, I'd rather slam my hand repeatedly in a car door than to darken their door. I think this is uh, much more what? niche than R RPG Net. Oh well, yeah. Whatever, uh, wherever uh, your your old old friend is is posting. Yeah. <laughs> it's not RPG. Net. It's not an yeah. RPG forum. It's not an I RPG can forum. That. No. Uh, probably a result mindset of you all know D&D &D, but and just creating shit from that yeah I don't even think it's that because that that's at least an acceptable normy like starting point where like I'm I'm gonna do a heartbreaker you yeah. know, gimmick or I'm going to I'm going to do <clears throat> I'm just gonna have my own campaign setting in um like using D and D mechanics, and we're doing the D and D loop, and we're gonna have the same D and D oh. type characters, but um, I don't. Again, I'm I'm not attempting to reinvent the wheel. This exists in the same space, but I'm doing my own spin on it. That's mm -hmm. fine. I have no I have no no problem with that. I think this is much much worse. It's I'm trying to invent the wheel, and I'm starting from what's so self-evidently such a like backwards and futile st futile starting point mm -hmm. yeah yeah and this is this is also why i'm going to be doing we're going to be doing a video on the set the uh, dragon lance campaign world yes um at some point soon um i really like that world the world of Kryn. Because it, uh, it's a world that has a vision um, at the outset, like an objective vision uh, by which everything within the world is measured and within the world uh, uh, by which every, every level of that world is sort of organized. It plays out across multiple levels and it informs so much of the types of people the types of cultures the types of institutions that take place on that world in a very interesting um and much more complex way than something like the realms or um well main, main, mainly the realms i don't i don't really know too much about mm -hmm. um i don't know Greyhawk or spell jammer or what have you uh, it's like trying to reinvent the wheel and starting from the windshield wiper blade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, BLG RPG when? Um, not soon, but on the horizon. Yeah. Uh, More information yeah, to, to come, come. Uh, on that. And join our locals if you want to help us play test yes, stuff and, yes. and do one shots and stuff with us. Uh, yep. Yeah, we're going to be... We're rolling that out very soon. Um, yeah. However, we do have... 
some RPG products coming out for uh, yes on that are on a much closer time horizon than like a full game. Mm. Uh, we're working on a Shadow Dark supplement. Un- yep. Unironically, we are making a Shadow Dark supplement. Mm-hmm. That'll probably come out first because it's a it's uh, the smallest in scope. Yeah. Um, fuck. The computer's o- what the fuck? Mm-hmm. One second. The computer's unplugged. Yeah, so that's probably going to come out first, and as we've talked about before on one of these streams, um, we have a um. Monster a, supplement. Um, yeah, it's a monster supplement, not simply a collection <laughs> of stat blocks, but no. um, sort of an, an in-universe um, roleplay-focused examination and exploration of a a monster type. Um, that, is ro- yeah, that, that, yeah. is, that is golems. Yeah, that is golems. What are they? How do they come to come to be? What are why are certain aspects of their construction chosen? What things do they do? Yeah, Both what does that impart? Mechan- yeah, what from- does that impart to the wizard? And yes, yes. The idea, the idea is to give you a whole shitload of fertile ground for adventures and for coming up with really fucked up wizards that made yeah. these things. <laughs> yeah, incorporating a, a, a golem in any capacity, either as an antagonist yeah. or uh, a wizard being the antagonist or one of your... Uh, players who wants to create one of these things that's that's a tremendous undertaking that's that's uh at that can at minimum be you know a, a big arc in a campaign all by itself yeah if not a full campaign itself right um where do you think the line between mechanics and role-playing falls do mechanics determine role-playing i feel like they're an extension of each other um, I don't. <sighs> they don't determine role playing. Yeah. But what they do, they they emulate or fail to emulate. Yeah. Um, a particular genre and a particular, like assortment of actions that a person takes in a world, and so th- that that fact informs role play, right? If you have mechanics just for combat, let's say that's going to inform something the only way you interface with the mechanics the only way that um there is sort of uncertainty and therefore um drama uh comes into play is during a combat situation right that's a very simplistic example but that's going to flavor how that world and how how the players and how the role play is going to you know look the best D&D setting is Planescape. Dark Sun is number two. I don't I don't agree. I never I never played uh Planescape. I played the video Planescape game. Planescape is cool. It Planescape is cool. Planescape is cool. It Sigil is cool. I don't really give a shit about the the, the Great Wheel. I don't yeah. care about Mechanus or Gehenna. Um the city of Sigil is cool. Yeah. Uh does Black Lodge Games play on VTTs and online. Uh, when we do play online, we just play like over Zoom or whatever, um, Gilded or Discord. Yeah, or whatever. whatever. Uh, we don't platform. generally use VTTs. Uh, right. We're big theater of the mind guys. Uh, uh, so the question becomes do you guys prefer TTRPGs that have a very established world or RPGs that set up a feel but keep the specifics up to the GM? I like an established. Here's the thing. I, I like an established world. I don't want it so fleshed out, though, that there's no creativity. I want some specificity in it. I want to know, like, what are, you know, like, nations or factions? Uh, what is the feel? I do want to know what the feel of the world is. Right. Give me enough inspiration that I can run with it, but there needs to be gaps in it. You know, like, if there's not large open spaces for me to fill things in, I'm not really interested. I don't want something that is like a fucking giant encyclopedia. Yeah. Cause what <clears throat> the, the problem you run into uh, along with many others, it's like, um, you know, like you can, you can, I'm playing a character in middle earth. Okay. But if I'm playing a character in middle earth, w- like <laughs> within the bounds of like the, the novel, or the novels, Lord of the Rings, 
you know, I exist in those scenes, right? With those implications of those characters doing the things that we see in the book, there's no room for me to do anything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can we play the golems a la Promethean the Created? No, they are antagonists, monsters. Unless... <sighs> I mean, I unless you make them and you do yeah, it unless, correctly. Yeah, unless you make it and do it correctly. I would say the intent is not that you're playing the golems. Yeah, although nothing's stopping you. Yeah, nothing's stopping you. It's not like I can stop you from playing the golems. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not the intention. Yeah. The, the intention right. is to, um, yeah, again, no, no pun intended, like breathe life on what's usually such a boring monster type. Right. Because they're just portrayed as magic robots which is so boring and so so stupid yeah uh if you need a hand with game research or input i would be uh glad to lend a hand i have helped a ton of games in the last seven years thank you nice thank you man yeah we might reach out to you uh bum, bum, bum. there's an argument to be made that the rules you don't put in your game are what the game's actually about if you put rules in a game they abstract that thing essentially reducing its fidelity hmm. i'd have to think about that I'll have to come back to you on that one because I don't think I, I'm not, I don't think I agree, but I don't have an articulated thought for it. Uh, RPG systems are supposed to simulate things, such as how D and D simulates the Appendix N. Uh, this goes back to war games that simulated well war, and also some games simulating survival and ex exploration. Um, yeah, I mean, I think games. I think that's the correct way that games should be made and that should be right <laughs> the the philosophy behind them it unfortunately isn't the philosophy behind a lot of games yeah. which is why a lot of them <laughs> suck yes um if you don't include rules for something that leaves the players and gm free to uh, improv the stuff that doesn't have detailed rules so yeah it does but at the same time like it that's sometimes an excuse for me having to, I, I don't want to have to make up shit for things that like, like if you don't have a stealth mechanic yeah i mean like the, there's a I, I i understand what you're you're saying yeah but it's like okay i i designed a superhero game that has rules for like different types of superpowers and there's no rules for banking or there's no like yeah. there's no rules for like <laughs> social engagement yeah and so those things and so it, it is about those i don't know yeah, I, I I feel like I partially agree. Yeah. Dude, the stealth mechanic, golems can uh, can easily be interesting, depending on what ingredients they need to be created. Adrenochrome field golems, <laughs> anyone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that is, oops, that is the uh, that is the case. There's different types of materials, different types of spirits and different manners in which you synthesize the two and yeah. breathe life, uh, create um, Graft an animating force. Something. Yeah, um, and make it all come, to get, come together. Yeah. Uh, Mothership literally is a stealth game with no stealth mechanic. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's designed that way on purpose to force choices. <laughs> like to choose to play a different game. <laughs> no, I don't know. I've never played it, so I'm not, played I'm not, I can't speak. I know to people. It. Some people like it. Always preferred Ravenloft. Uh, how married to dice are you? You ever play an RPG that utilizes play cards? I have not played any card-based RPGs. I do like dice. Uh, yeah, I like dice. Uh, part of that is probably just inertia on my part, but I think that they are. I feel like it'd be quicker. It, it's going to yeah. be quicker to resolve now. Something. It is a gimmick, but um, if they do it well, it would be, for me, a worthwhile gimmick. I think Aces and Eights, it's a it's a Wild West game, and that uses a deck of playing cards. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think that's 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 fun. I've never I never played it. I don't know if it's good or not, uh, but I would uh, I'd be open to it. But generally speaking, no. Yeah. Uh, thank you. This is what is this name? The name is so small. Spiky. Spiky. For $10, says, hey, guys, I appreciate the channel and the work you do. I was also wondering if you had played Castles and Crusades. Oh, hell yeah. Considering to give it a go. I love Castles and Crusades. I have not played Castles and Crusades, but the Troll Lord games, guys, seem pretty cool. Yeah, they're cool. They're cool people. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, I would I would recommend it. It's uh, <coughs> um I think definitely a better D&D genre. It does capture the more heroic, higher stakes um vibe of earlier editions without the uh the infuriating uh and sometimes counterintuitive mechanics mm -hmm. of AD&D 2nd edition. Castles and Crusades is awesome and Troll Lord games are great people, old yeah. school feel with newer school approach. Yeah, 100%. Their world is really cool and they have a uh, Troll Lord games has a, a really great um, series um, uh, that goes into different um, real world mythologies. So oh, that you, cool. not, only, not only can you use them in your game, yeah. but it's actually like a legitimately good like reference material nice pendragon 5.2 versus axe 2 i think they're i don't know because i, haven't I played think they first, do to totally different yeah things. totally different things i haven't played pendragon but i know it's extremely different than axe 2 um mm -hmm. and meant to be so i don't think you can really compare them um that slurping noise is <laughs> my dog drinking a gallon of water right now uh the codex series yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mr. Max, Frankenstein is the monster. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on Free League Press games? Um, I haven't played any, any Free League stuff. People, I have. People have said to check them out, though. Yeah, I've, I've, I've played or run uh, a bunch of them. I generally do like them. I really like Coriolis. Mm -hmm. um, uh, their production value is great. Usually they have very tight... Um, they have like a tight idea and they, mm -hmm. they do it pretty well. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the, uh, the system that most of the Free League games do because you end up maxing out your power progression. And so in my, in my view, it doesn't incentivize long longer term play which i prefer mayor mccheese saying we still use dice for rpgs for the same reason we still use circles for wheels <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right guys well it uh we are we are coming up on two hours and we do want to thank everybody uh yeah this was for showing up a shit ton of fun. yeah this shit ton so of fun. fun uh you guys were very very generous and we yeah. do appreciate that and uh, yeah thank you so much you're uh your uh your contributions, contributions will be put to use um in the channel as they all, all already uh, already have done we right have new new equipment new setup yep we're gonna record another podcast episode, podcast soon. episode yep um and yeah it's uh thank you guys very much we're yeah. gonna probably uh head out head so out yep have a good night yep take care guys